Hey, what is up guys? It's Brennan here and today I'm going to be showing you how to add users, staff accounts, give workers access, as well as how to add collaborators as well to your Shopify store. So these are all ways to provide additional access and permissions on your Shopify store in case you have employees or people that you want to add and provide access to your Shopify store. Now there are a variety of different extra settings that you can also tweak and adjust so that each different user is given a certain amount of permissions. So that's what we're gonna be diving into here in today's video, exactly how to do that and how it looks depending on the Shopify plan that you're on as well, because it does differ depending on what Shopify plan that you are on. Now, before we dive into things, of course, I do wanna mention if you don't already have a Shopify store, you can go and check out that first link down below in the description. That's brennanvaleski.com forward slash Shopify. It'll take you right over to this page here where you can get started with a Shopify free trial trial. Once again, that's a Shopify free trial. Again, first link in the description. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial. So of course, first things first, you're going to want to make sure that you are logged into your Shopify store if you are already subscribed to a Shopify store plan. If you are not, and maybe if you already are, there are a few uh, considerations you do need to make in terms of whether you are adding collaborators users or staff accounts. So in terms of the latest up-to-date Shopify pricing plans, there are three different tiers that exist that have the staff accounts and the ability to add collaborators. So as you can see here, you have the different plans, right? You have the basic plan, the Shopify plan, and the advanced plan. Now, most people are probably going to be on the basic plan, but Shopify does have it now where you're only able to add collaborators, which could include designers, developers, marketing experts, you provide them limited access to your Shopify store. And this also does not count towards staff account limits, which is an important detail there so that you know, and you're aware that, hey, this doesn't actually count towards the staff account limit. And you know, you can just keep adding more collaborators that are, you know, designers, uh, developers, or marketing experts. This could also be Shopify experts that are helping you with your Shopify store as well. So this falls under the collaborator account section section uh, underneath their different feature sets. So again, you have that on all the different Shopify plans, but if you are looking to add staff accounts, more so the whole like adding users or give, providing workers access, you have different tiers. So on the basic tier that is not included anymore, uh, on the basic Shopify, you cannot do staff accounts, uh, but then on the regular Shopify, you can do up to five and up to 15 on the advanced plan. Now, there are other variations, like if you maybe are on Shopify Plus or even you know above and beyond, you can go beyond uh, like 15 users if you need that, if you are at that size and scale, that's more again like the Shopify enterprise level type plans. That would be more so again, sort of like their uh, you know enterprise commerce, which you have to contact them, get in touch with them, or Shopify Plus. That's where you can get sort of over 15 if you do need that. Uh, but I get that most people watching this video probably don't need more than 15 users, but I figured I would mention it uh, just because, you know, that's something to keep in mind that you might need the plus or enterprise level if you are at that size and scale. Again, they have, you know, you can contact their sales team and get in touch with them if you do need more users than the standard issue of, you know, 15 on the uh, advanced plan or, you know, if you do need to go more than 15. But if you know, and you wanna add users on the regular Shopify plan, you can do that on up to five. So in terms of how to actually go about doing this on your Shopify store, again, once you've decided on the plan, you actually have a Shopify store, of course, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you log into your Shopify store. Pretty straightforward there. Of course, again, this does depend on which version of Shopify plan that you have as to how this will look. Um, but again, even on the basic plan, you can still add collaborators. So that is something keep it, worth keeping in mind there. So, you know, in terms of adding other actual user roles, this is how you go about doing it. So you can either go the route of clicking the settings in the bottom left-hand corner once you're signed in, or what you can do is pretty easy is you just come up to the search box here and you can type in user. Now I've already typed in user, uh, so it will search for user. And there's a couple of different areas you can either click on add staff. We're gonna actually go to users and permissions. So again, this is also located under your settings if you wanna click the gear icon and select settings, or you can do it this way, just type user in the search bar and click users and permissions. As you can see here, this is now in the Shopify settings section under users and permissions. 
As you can see here, I am currently the store owner. Now, if your Shopify store is being developed maybe by a third party, they might be the owner. So you wanna make sure that you get your ownership transferred depending on you know if you're maybe working with a web development team or something like that. Uh, on your Shopify store, make sure, you know, transfer the ownership, you know, get that there. So you're the store owner again, because some owner permissions can't be assigned to staff members. So that's important there. Um, you know, as far as making sure that you have full complete keys to the kingdom, uh, so to speak. So in terms of adding actual user permissions and adding the staff accounts, this is where you do it here. So as you can see on this development store, we have zero out of 15 currently added. And we also have the collaborator section, and this is where you can also um, add collaborators. So again, this is the external designers, developers, and marketers access to your Shopify admin. So these are a few different categories of user permissions. Again, you have your store owner permission, uh, you have your staff setting, uh, which we'll get into adding staff in just a moment, and your collaborator section. Now, you can either set it to have anyone can send a collaborator request, So, um, but by default, it will protect your store security so that collaborator requests have to enter a specific code. You can then generate that code there, uh, and you can just share that with them so that it will allow someone to easily send you the collaborator request. You can review and approve that request from them. In addition, you do have other login services. So you can also add Google apps if you want people to be able to sign in under a Google uh, account. You know, it's up to you if you want to use that. So in terms of actually adding the uh, staff members, as you can see, you can customize, edit, and the levels of access. We're going to be getting into that now. So here we can add up to 15 on this plan. So we're going to go ahead and click add staff. So here is where you can add your actual staff members information and provide them with those, you know, the details, so, you know, employees access or workers access or whoever you're providing access. Um, this is where you do it. And you can really get pretty granular as well on the different store permissions again, which is super key, just like how you would on you know, a lot of other websites to make sure that, you know, you have control and people get access just to what they need on your Shopify store. So you go here, you can add their first and last name. Uh, they recommend here to enter, you know, as it appears on their government issued ID, just so that it's clear and, and, and direct. You add their email there. And then under the store permissions, this is where it gets a little more complex and complicated um, as far as all the different settings that you can add. Now within the staff permissions, as you can see, these are the store permissions. We'll take a look at them, but I'm not going to be going too specific on all of them because there are a lot here, but you you can select different settings depending on what you want to provide users access to. Again, depending on maybe their, their role or what they're going to be doing in terms of helping you with your store. Maybe they're a virtual assistant or something like that. No matter what who, who they are, this is where you can customize those settings. Again, you have things like analytics, products, uh, orders. So we, we're going to go ahead and expand it just so you can get a view of what that looks like. Uh, as far as what permissions you you would be able to add if you have the ability, uh, maybe if you're still deciding on what Shopify plan you're trying to go with and what the store you know user permissions actually looks like, this is what it looks like. You know you can edit uh, if they want to if you want them to be able to view orders, if you want them to be able to set payment terms, credit card charges, uh, issue refunds, uh, cancel orders, um, you know manage abandoned checkouts, create draft orders, products, uh, editing, adding gift cards. Uh, you know, editing your your web design as well, like meta objects and things like that, creating them, uh, adding customers, you know, going through and parsing that information, uh, additional companies, uh, analytics. So maybe they just need access to the reports, uh, marketing, adding campaigns there, discounts, online stores. So you can edit the code or the theme. You can edit blog posts, things like that. Uh, you, navigation, you have users, so you can allow the, you can provide user role uh, to be able to edit the user permissions. So, you know, maybe if someone's a manager and they need to be onboarding a lot of people, that's how you can do it there. Um, you also have app development as well as store settings. So, you know, the list goes on and on here. You also have finance settings and you can also edit the app permissions as far as which apps are, you know, they can actually utilize. So maybe if you're, you know, in this example here, if you're doing AliExpress dropshipping with DSers, then they you make sure that they have access to that app. Or if you're doing Shopify collabs or digital downloads, you know, giving them access to apps that they might need to get access to. You can also select uh, the app permissions here. 
uh, as well, or the ability to even manage and install additional apps um, and uh, app charges as well, because a lot of apps do have monthly fees or uh, different charges, whatever that may look like. And then you send your invite here and that's how you do it. That's what you can edit and customize here. As you can see, you could get really, really granular as far as all the information that you want people to either have access to or not have access to under the staff roles and you know sending out those invites to the different staff roles as well as if you want to add you know collaborator requests now collaborators are a little bit different again because it doesn't count towards your limit but it really is more limited to just you know designers developers people that you're providing you know quite a bit more access to if you want to get granular on certain staff members you have to do it with the with the staff selector uh, and adding staff that way to your shopify store so yeah, that pretty much wraps up how to add users and permissions. Again, it's quite a few different ways to slice it. And again, it does depend as well on what Shopify plan you decide to go with, or if you already are on a Shopify plan, again, they do have that option here where you can compare it and, you know, subscribe or select different plans depending on what your needs are as a business or as a company or, you know, what, however you want to operate your Shopify store. Again, if you don't already have a Shopify store, you can go and check out that first link down below in the description. That's brennavaleski.com forward slash Shopify. It'll take you right over to this page here where you can get started with a Shopify free trial. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, if you enjoyed it or found it helpful, then be sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button as well, and notification bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Anyway, guys, that's all for today's video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.